Today's episode is dedicated to continuation of the discussions for the home NAS or if you use your NAS for the small office at home, how we can improve performance of that NAS to make it faster, better, more snappier when we work with the files and especially if you use 10 gigabit network. I have here the link of the episodes which we discussed uh, primarily applications for the home NAS or the small office NAS if you integrate that with uh, VMware or what you can do if you integrate it with 10 gigabit networking on your house. And that episode also here and it's got some data about performance metrics and how we measure performance and with different tests and measure IOPS, measure throughputs. And if you remember on that episode we discussed IO throughput and megabit per second throughput being a limitation of the NAS itself because 10 gig can drive pretty significant workload but if your NAS is only having like uh, speeding drives and stuff like that then uh, your throughput is still going to be limited by the maximum performance of the NAS. So today we're going to go and take that discussion a little bit further and on top of the 10 gigabit network we're going to also integrate NVMe cache on the cards which are recently were released by Synology and now available for you to order and that card is EM10 um, E10M20T1. This is the card. We're gonna do unboxing and install the NVMe drives which I got here. I got uh, VHand SSDs from Samsung 512 gigabyte 970 Pro. The reason I'm selected Pro is because there's a, I'm gonna use this SSD drives for the actual cache on that card. And for cache there's the specifics on the IO throughput are gonna be massive workload on the small transactions back and forth on the small blocks and for that you would need a pro card to be able to handle that otherwise if you put normal SSD the chances are that SSD will fail more frequently than you would expect that because it's not simply designed to manage and operate on that kind of workload so I talked to the, some of the guys on uh, one of my 1817 plus where I have uh, SSDs installed as a cache and I have to update those to pro cards because when I open a case with one of the vendors I got reply back saying you're using it for the cache therefore you need a pro card because the card which you are using right now SSD drives those are not suitable for that workload and you can expect that to fail even faster so make sure you got the proper SSD uh, if it's NVMe M2 drives or if you're using for the cache on the previous generations of Synology then you actually go and select the cards which uh, select the SSD drives which are going to handle that workload being used as a cache. We're also going to do and install more memory in that uh, Synology. Today we're going to talk and unbox 1819 plus and the reason I selected 1819 plus because the extension cards on that machine, it's also supporting MDNV drives being used as a cache. If you go with something earlier on generations, you might hit the problem because uh, SSDs on the M2 cards are supported. Uh, this is PCI Express uh, card extension inside the Synology, but the kernel on the OS and the kernel on the machine itself does not support MDNV drives. 1817 Plus, which I have also, and it's using that fiber optic connecting 10 gig card it doesn't support NVMe uh, so I cannot put my extension slot into extension card into that machine so but what we can do still on those older Synology is to install maximum memory because the reason kernel works like that is then you're gonna go and have free memory if you don't run in too many applications on your Synology like VMs or Docker containers then this memory will be available and Synology will use that free memory as a cache to speed up your IOPS. So for that reason, the new Synology 1819 support extension up to 32 gig and I'm going to install two crucial sodium DDR4 drives in that machine as well. So the reason why also we're going to go with uh, Synology 1819 is because of its performance characteristics so we're looking around rough throughput of uh, reading at 2000 uh, megabit per second 
and, read, and writing of 656 megabit per second combined with 10 gig interface and including the cache on top of that we should get pretty decent performance in time on file transfers and even if you use it for VMware for the actual data stores then it's going to be much faster even with what you have on 10 gig normally so like DS15 also DS1819 is based on this manual paper here also support extension because it's an 8 bay uh, disk unit and I'm going to integrate that with my VMware farm and also with my workflow for production because the reason I want that to be done is to be able to operate on my video footage on Final Cut directly from that box without actually having issues. For that we would need to get an interface on MacBook Pro to be able to connect to 10GIG network and then that 10 gig link will link it up to Synology on this particular unit and hopefully with the uh, help of this extension card, SSD and a lot of memory and this NVMe cache we will have snappier and more faster and performing unit which will allow us to do video workflows directly from the Mac also what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna install for beginning uh, so we can create a file system and operation environment for the Synology NAS I'm going to start with one 8 terabyte drive uh, as my volume drive, but I'm also going to test it against uh, free 512 uh, SSDs from Samsung, which I'm going to create as a RAID and see how fast we can go. But the reason I'm selecting the 8 gig, 8 terabyte drives right now, which I can also later when I need more space, definitely going to buy at least one more drive like that and uh, mirror it out and once I need more space I will add another drive and convert mirror to RAID 5 and then I'm gonna go from that and expand it as we go so that's one of the benefits of 8 bay drives um, Synology unit you can start small with your drives being like whatever minimum capacity you need and then just add it up and by the time you have 8 drives times 8 uh, actually times 7 because one will be used for parity it's going to be a lot of storage and you can save your footage there or save your work if you do photography or stuff like that even the documents and encrypted stuff and uh, things we can do with the shared cloud and stuff and other technology and other technology provided by Synology itself so let's do unboxing like I said we're going to install three main components in that we're going to install memory first when we're going to go and create and um, assemble together the EM2 uh, cart with SSDs with NVMe M2 drives and then install that inside the Synology unit and once we fire up we will configure all the IP addresses and stuff create one volume and then I have to move it downstairs where I have my 10 gig network infrastructure right now and we're gonna test it from there to see how fast it can go. So as usual, the Synology units come over with a box and we can open it up, see what's inside. There is not much of the variety of the packaging on the Synology. So uh, you can get the drives and uh, there is a cabling and things like that as a specific box. So you have here cables, which is not uh, 10 gig cables with a normal Ethernet up to one gig. Power cord and the keys which you can lock the base inside the Synology unit so nobody will take the drives out but these keys are so 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 it's not really secure stuff but just the peace of mind and uh, of course we got the manual quick start and the unit itself which is right here all right so we don't need that anymore Right, and get this out right there and this is the nice packaging unit for Synology so let's go and do unboxing open it up start configuration My table this is one of the benefits of the table when it is rising up uh, it's currently on the elevated position right now so I'm standing here in front of the table and this desk uh, in front of the desk so this desk is actually very good I'll show on this side here, I have a video about my experience with the Jarvis table so make sure to check it out because you might find this very useful as well um, especially right now when we work from home and people are sitting a lot actually and that's not good for your health, not good for your back so you have to stand up periodically Apple Watch will let you know that you have to stand up 
but what I'm doing, I'm actually splitting my day on different quarters of time. Uh, I can stand one hour straight and then I sit, then I stand again. So make sure you're moving in this difficult time around the house and don't sit too much and too long because it's not good for your health. So first thing first, what we're going to do, we're going to install the memory. And memory on this unit, uh, access port is very conveniently situated on the bottom of the unit. So all you have to do is just unscrew these two screws here and then just open this door and then you can install the memory inside. So let's open these doors, access doors on this side and then we're gonna just gonna install the memory. We're gonna put it upside down for the time being. Open this up and as you can see there is a memory unit right there which is installed Synology memory module. So we're gonna take it out. And it's regular sodium, it's also DDR4. And it's very important to put the memory in the right slot, uh, in the right orientation of the uh, memory DIMM itself. So just click it up and then just press and it holds like that. So it's very easy to do. Just don't rush, just do it slowly and meticulously and click. All right, so now memory is installed. So what I can do right now is close this door and we will open the box itself so we can install the card. Alright, I have removed the cover. As you can see, here's our PCI Express slot, which we're gonna install the card. And once we have card ready and all the SSD mounted on that first, we have to prep the card first to make sure M2 drives are installed correctly there. And then we're gonna put it here. But for now, I'm just gonna move this unit aside and we'll start working on the card itself. So for the card, what I would have is two this weekend's uh, Samsung drives, and that's what we're gonna have here. And this is the card itself. And once we're ready, we will install this eight terabyte drives, one terabyte, eight terabyte drive, and then we're gonna go ahead and test it out. So let's start with this thing first. So what we have inside a pretty straightforward package with a click installation guide. There is a heat sink. There's a bracket which you can install here if you get the longer one. We're gonna use the short one here. And then there is a card itself and there's a thermal pads which we will use to actually secure the uh, heat exchange between the M2 drives and the, uh, these heat sinks. And of course you have some screws here which will allow us to operate on different sizes of M2 drives. So on this card there's a two different DIMMs, uh, two different sizes which you can install M2 drives. We're gonna go with 2280, there is also for 22110, but for that uh, there is a brackets here already installed. For this we will need to get these things installed first, these particular uh, brackets here so we can fix our drive on this side. And these are the thermal pads and there's instructions how to do it properly once the drives are installed. And once it's all done, we're gonna go and install the heatsink. And after that, card should be ready to install into Synology. This is our 970 Pros. We have two of those, so let's go uh, and install that over here. I have one drive installed. As you can see, I have these pillars for supporting the drive also installed. There is instructions. There is one side of the manual is dedicated to 22110, and the other one, the other side is dedicated to 2280. So make sure you follow the instructions to the T to avoid any future problems with this card because once it is installed and inside your shelves then it's very unpleasant surprises when you have to actually remove it all and disassemble and do it right. So make sure you do it right, take your time and just slowly follow the instructions and operate on this very carefully because this is all static AWR devices so make sure you don't have any static electricity on your hands. The next step is to install thermal pads on the heatsink before we install it on the cart itself. So now I have all the thermal pads installed and there is extra if you screw up on the side and also this is required if you use 22 tents. But for our application we will have only these six pads installed and that should do it. Uh, so there is a clear mark in how much you need in case of different applications on different uh, M2 uh, slots and M2 carts. So if you have 2210, you have to add two more thermal pads here. Alright, so now just a matter of installing that and to this side here. 
and that should conclude our assembly of the card and then we can switch over to installing that card inside the unit itself. The card is installed. I have to remove this uh, blocker bracket right there and just put the card in, fix it on the top and make sure there is a cable stair going so we don't really in contact with the card which not supposed to be the case and now it's all good I think so we should be good to go to close it up and to start our configuration and testing so it's RG45 but it's 10 gig interface and you also have your regular 4 1 gigabit interface which we can create a bond connection and there are some USB type 3 and extension slots for the external additional units but we're not going to use those okay so the unit is ready to install the first drive I'm going to have it installed on the slot number one and the installation of Synology drives is pretty straightforward there is no bolts required or anything like that so you just have to eject these holders on the side put your drive in and then close it up and that's pretty much it so I'm using Seagate Iron Wolf 8 terabyte drives so that's just first one of those but uh, as time goes up I'm gonna add more hopefully we're gonna get cheaper in price as well by that time so here is the unit we're ready to power up I installed one drive in a slot one and also get one cable connection going to my switch on the desk right there so it's pretty straightforward setup wise and that's just gonna go moment of truth so let's go power it up and now the system will start up once it's started we will discover it on my system over here and start the configuration on screen for the searching for the proper configuration of memory and hard drive and everything like that Alright guys, that's it for today's episode for now. This is part 1 of installation of DS1819 Plus and configuration of it for 10 gig connectivity. On the next episode we're going to talk about 10 gig performance. Uh, we're also going to talk about CalDigit 10 gig interface, which I have right now here, which we're going to set up on my MacBook Pro to have direct access to Synology via 10 gig interface. So make sure you subscribe, make sure your notification bell is on so the next video when it's available on the channel you will be notified. Also, please feel free to share it with your friends. I will appreciate new people on the channel to support it and um, to share the passion for the tech. So until next time, I'll see you around. Peace.